Fairy type Pokemon might be the most recent Pokemon type in the series, being introduced in X and Y. But since their introduction, we've seen a wide and interesting range of Pokemon. From magical fairy types that would seem to come from a storybook, to true behemoths. Today, we're going to be looking at every fairy type Pokemon in terms of strength. I'm Kyle with Pokebinge, and this is fairy type Pokemon weak to powerful. Real quick before we start, just some general rules. We'll be focusing on these Pokemon based on their in-game stats and how they do in battle. Also, if an entire evolutionary line shares the fairy typing, we'll be grouping them together. The phrase looks can be deceiving is a really appropriate saying for our weakest fairy type Pokemon. The deceiver Pokemon, Mawile. With their incredibly sharp set of teeth that line the horns on the back of their heads, Mawile looks like they should be ranked a lot higher on this list. But that's just not the case. With their stats capped out at 380, Mawile is very weak. Sure, out of all those stats, Mawile's base attack is the highest, being 85. And if they do Mega Evolve, it does get a bit of a power boost. Their ranking is sort of fitting to their Pokedex entries, mentioning they need to trick others before even launching a successful attack. So the Deceiver Pokemon finds itself at the very bottom, in our weakest ranking. Our first evolutionary line is up next, the Illuminating Pokemon, the Shenotic line. It might be surprising that an evolutionary line lands so low in our ranking, but as you'll see in our next few entries, the Shenotic line isn't exclusive when it comes to evolution not necessarily meaning becoming a powerhouse. Out of both the grass and fairy types, the first Pokemon in this line, Morlul, is one of the weakest Pokemon out there, ranking in at a mere 285 in stats. And obviously Shenotic does become a bit stronger when it evolves, but not a whole lot, as when they're at their strongest they only reach 405 in their stats, with their special defense being their best stat, which still only comes in at 100. When it comes to lore, like Mawile, the Shenotic line doesn't prefer head-to-head -head fights, instead using the spores their bodies produce in order to cause their enemies to fall asleep even before attacking. Swimming in to take our third spot from the bottom, we have the Aqua Rabbit Pokemon, the Azumarill line. Remember when we said Morlul was one of the weakest fairy types in the series? Well, the first Pokemon in the Azumarill line, Azrael takes the spot for weakest in this category, with a pitiful 190 maxed out stat to their name. But in its defense, Azrael is one of the few Pokemon to be in their baby forms. Unfortunately, after Azrael does evolve due to closely bonding with their trainers, they're still far from powerhouses, as Meryl has a maximum stat of 250. Azumarill does gain a pretty good power boost once Meryl evolves into them, but while it does land them above our previous two entries, even when Azumarill is at their strongest, they don't exceed the stat ranking of 420. That said, the Azumarill line does have the ability Thick Fat, which does reduce the damage taken from both Fire and Ice type moves. But outside this extra protection, it's far from being considered a strong fairy type. Which brings us to another fairy Pikachu lookalike, the Antenna Pokemon, Dedenne. Now, we have to admit, out of all the Pika clone Pokemon, Dedenne has a great design. With their tail resembling an extension cord and antenna like whiskers, you gotta love them. But unfortunately for Dedenne, this list isn't based on design, but stats, and when it comes to this Antenna Pokemon's strength, their total stats only clock in at 431. It does have a pretty decent speed stat, like most other Pika clone Pokemon but that's really the only standout. Floating in next is the balloon Pokemon, the Wigglytuff line. If we were doing a ranking for singing prowess, we'd be ranking the Wigglytuff line much higher, solely based on Jigglypuff's impressive set of vocal cords. However, when it comes to Pokemon battles, there isn't anything particularly, well, tough about the Wigglytuff line. With Igglybuff, the first Pokemon in this trio, they barely do better than Azuril, only outranking the first Pokemon in the Azumarill line by 20 stat points, giving it a grand total of 210. And Jigglypuff hardly does any better than the younger Igglybuff, as their highest stat is HP, with both their attack and defense stats really low. And while Wigglytuff does gain a good amount of both attack and special attack stats, in addition to their already high HP stat, it still doesn't exceed more than 435 stats points. So unfortunately for the Wigglytuff line, it really doesn't take too much damage to let all the air out of the balloon Pokemon. A common saying is that one's bark is worse than their bite, and with our next duo, the Gramble line, the saying really fits. 
Like with our first Pokemon in this ranking, Mawile, we wouldn't blame you if you expected both Snubble and Gramble to be much tougher than they actually are. Unlike the other fairy types we've mentioned so far, both of these guys have a pretty good attack stat, with it outshining all their other stats. Gramble's in particular being a fairly decent 145, and with a powerful set of jaws, it's not hard to see why Game Freak made it their strongest attribute. However, even though the Gramble line can deliver a powerful bite, when it comes to defense, and speed, they're lacking a great deal. At their strongest, the Gramble line has a max stat of 450, which could be worse. But as there are multiple Pokedex entries that mention that Snubble and Gramble use their grumpy expressions to intimidate others and not have to fight, as well as their lack of quickness and defense, they land here. Our next duo of fairy types wouldn't be out of place when it comes to performing for others. The barrier Pokemon, the Mr. Mime line. Like others on the list, the Mr. Mime evolutionary line starts out with one of the few baby Pokemon, this time being Mime Jr. However, unlike Azuril and Igglybuff, who are either below or just above the 200 stat mark, Mime Jr. actually is one of the strongest young Pokemon, with a maxed out stat of 310. But while Mime Jr. and Mr. Mime have a pretty good defensive stat, and can definitely take a couple of solid hits before they're KO'd, they're also not the best fighters. When it comes to Mr. Mime, similar to Mime Jr., they have pretty low attack and HP stats, with their maxed out stats coming in at 460. And with the Mr. Mime line known for creating walls out of thin air, it isn't that much of a surprise that their strongest stat is their special defense of 120. Sure, they do provide a pretty decent shield in battle, but since they're far from powerhouses in other areas, the barrier Pokemon are ranked here. Coming in from the Kalos region is the Fragrance Pokemon, the Aroma this line. With both Spritzies and Aromatis's large eyes and slightly curved noses, it's no stretch to say that this evolutionary line was inspired by Plague Doctor masks that were first introduced during the Bubonic Plague. But while it looks like a strong gust of wind might send either Pokemon flying, both are a bit tougher than they look. With Spritzy, they might not be the best at attacking, but their special defense and HP isn't half bad for a Pokemon in their first stage, ranking in at 341. After it evolves into Aromatis, their special attack gets a pretty good boost, being their second highest stat, only being being a few points below their HP. When Aromatis are at their strongest, they're only a few points above Mr. Mime at 462. But for their decent special attack power, as well as their pretty good HP, they are in a spot here. Flying into our next spot, we have the B Pokemon, Ribombi. Compared to some of our previous entries, both Cutiefly and Ribombi are some of the speediest fairy types out there. Sure, when it comes to Cutiefly's stats outside their speed, they aren't exactly the strongest first stage Pokemon, actually being weaker than both Mime Jr. and Spritzy coming in at 304. However, Ribombi not only keeps Cutiefly's impressive speed, but after they evolve, they get a pretty good special attack stat to boot, with their special attack being 95 along with their speed at 124. Unfortunately for both, they aren't the greatest at defending themselves, with that particular stat being one of their weakest at 60 points. But with a max stat of 464, if they have the right moveset, they can utilize their speediness coupled with their special attack power. Losing your keys is one of the most annoying things you can do, but thanks to the key ring Pokemon, Klefki, those in the Pokemon universe don't have to worry about that. In addition to their habit of keeping their trainer's keys safe, Klefki isn't half bad when it comes to Pokemon battles. It's actually a pretty well-rounded fairy type. They do have lower HP compared to their other stats, but not by much. And as Klefki is also a steel type in addition to their fairy typing, it helps with their defense stat, it being their strongest stat at 91. But while Klefki is fairly well-rounded with their maxed out stats coming in at 470, they also don't have anything that really makes them stand out in battle either, leading to them being closer to the middle of our ranking. Our favorite Pikachu cosplayer is next, the Disguise Pokemon. Mimikyu. Even though nobody has any clue of what this ghost slash fairy Pokemon looks like underneath their best homemade costume, that doesn't prevent Mimikyu from being a beloved Pokemon in the series. In addition to their pretty dark backstory, Mimikyu can handle themselves pretty well in battle. We will admit that while Mimikyu is kind of lacking HP, they have pretty decent attack, special defense, and speed stats, with Mimikyu coming in at 476. 
with their speed at 96 points and their special defense coming in at 105, which really helps out Mimikyu in battle. That, coupled with their very useful ability Disguise, which prevents Mimikyu from taking any damage from whatever first attack they take in a battle, helps give it an edge in a fight. That said, it is a one-time ability, as after taking the hit, Mimikyu's cosplay will break and stay broken until they're healed up at a Pokemon Center, or from healing items. But for their unique ability and their pretty decent stats and moveset, it's not really a surprise why so many players choose Mimikyu for their team. Our first fairy types from the Paldea region are coming in next. The Dog Pokemon, the Daxpun line. Undoubtedly one of the most popular evolutionary lines in the Paldea region, both Fido and Daxpun help out residents thanks to their ability to help wheat grow, as well as the pleasant scent of freshly baked bread that comes from these Pokemon's bodies. Granted, when Fido steps onto the battlefield, their stats aren't really anything to write home about, coming in at a total of 312. But like Daxpun, Fido's best stats are their defense and speed, meaning they can be a pretty sturdy but quick Pokemon if they have the right moveset. Doxbun is actually pretty impressive, with this dog Pokemon coming in at 477 in total stats, but they also have the ability Well-Baked Body, which makes them not only immune to all fire-type moves, but also gives them a boost to their defense stat whenever Doxbun is hit by one when battling. But even if it isn't hit by a fire-type move in order to increase their defense, this particular stat comes in at a pretty good 115. Outside their ability to have an increasing defense stat, Doxbun isn't too shabby when it comes to going on the offense either. If their trainer handles both these Pokemon right, Fido and Doxbun can be impressive Pokemon on the battlefield. Floating into our next spot, we have the Wind Veiled Pokemon, the Whimsicott line. If you were to just look at Cottony, we wouldn't be surprised if you thought this Pokemon was one of the weakest fairy types out there. And you'd be right about that, as Cottony is weaker than the first stage Pokemon from our last couple of entries, coming in at 280, with their speed being the most notable stat and having little else going for them. But as is the trend in the Pokemon world, in an evolutionary family, more times than not, the final Pokemon gets quite a boost, and Whimsicott Cod is no exception, and while it does get increased attack and defense stats, it's their speed that shines above the other stats. Coming in at 116, with Whimsicott getting a maxed out stat ranking of 480. Moving on to the Slurpuff line, both Swirlix and Slurpuff look like they would be total pushovers when it comes to Pokemon battles, and while Swirlix looks like they could be sent tumbling from the lightest attack, they have a fairly decent defensive stat, coupled with their pretty high HP, with their highest stats coming in at 341. And like we said, with Slurpuff, this sweet looking Pokemon might not have any particular stat that stands out above the others, with a majority of them being around the mid 80s and high 70s mark. Instead, all of them are fairly balanced out, tying with Whimsicott at 480. What gives Slurpuff the spot above Whimsicott, however, is the ability both Swirlix and Slurpuff have, Sweet Veil, which prevents both themselves as well as their ally Pokemon from falling asleep in a Pokemon battle. Sure, unlike some of of our previous final evolutions, Slurpuff may not have the strongest stat, but thanks to their well-roundedness and their sweet veil ability, they definitely earn some points. Moving on to the first ever fairy type Pokemon, we have the fairy Pokemon, the Clefable line. When compared to our previous baby Pokemon, Cleffa is one of the strongest ones in the fairy type category, coming only second to Mime Jr. at 218. However, Cleffa isn't always the easiest Pokemon to get, unless one does breeding or trades with someone. So Clefairy is more often than not the first Pokemon they encounter in this evolutionary line. That being said, Clefairy is also one of the earlier stage Pokemon who have multiple decent stats, specifically their HP, special attack, and special defense. Clefairy does not exceed the 323 mark for their stats, but all things considered, this fairy Pokemon can more than handle themselves when it comes to fighting, and that goes double for Clefable. True, their maxed out stats come to 483, but similar to Clefairy, Clefable's HP, as well as their special attack and defense stats, can make them pretty good powerhouses on the battlefield, especially since this evolutionary line line learns some pretty devastating moves, such as Moonblast, one of the strongest fairy type moves in the series. Next up we have Comfy. At first glance, you probably wouldn't expect Comfy to pack much decent defensive stats, but while it may not be an absolute powerhouse when it comes to battling, they can take a few blows before getting KO'd, thanks to them having a special defense power of 110. In addition to their decent defense, Comfy are pretty speedy as well, with their speed being their second strongest stat.
stat at 100 points, with their total coming in at 485. It may be kind of lacking when it comes to actually attacking as that particular stat is pretty low, coming in at a mere 52, but for its defense, speed, and their ability triage, that gives healing moves a priority. They can be pretty handy Pokemon when it comes to double or triple battles, giving their allied Pokemon a boost and an edge in battle. We have our first regional form coming in next, the Poison Gas Pokemon, Galarian Weezing. Not only has Weezing in the Gala region changed their biology in order to take the polluted air only to purify it and help others out, but they're also no slouch when it comes to battles. Galarian Weezing does have a shared trait with some of our past entries, that being their defense is their highest stat, being an impressive 120, but their attack isn't that far behind, coming in at 90, with their overall stats coming in at 490. In addition to being a great choice for either going on the defense or the offense, Galarian Weezing has one of the most useful abilities in the series, Neutralizing Gas, which cancels out all other Pokemon abilities on the battlefield. Their trainer does have to be aware, though, that this will affect their other Pokemon as well if they have Galarian Weezing in a double or triple battle, which can present some sticky situations. Moving on to the cream Pokemon, the Alchemy line. In the world of unique evolutions, the Alchemy line definitely has one of the most unique in order for Milseri to evolve into Alchemy. Specifically, Milseri has to be holding the sweet item before their trainer spins around quickly in order for the evolution to take place. And while Milseri is far from the strongest fairy type out there, with their stats coming in at 270, if one does decide to evolve them into Alchemy, they will get a fairly decent Pokemon on their team. Alchemy barely misses out on the 500 stat marker, coming in at 495, with both their special attack and special defense stats getting a significant boost, with their special defense being the stronger of the two, coming in at 121, and special attack only being 11 points under at 110. Plus, like with the Slurpuff line, both Milseri and Elkermy have the ability Sweet Veil, which cancels out the chance of both themselves and their allied Pokemon from falling asleep, which can be a helpful ability to have. Next, we have the Jewel Pokemon, Carbink. With this one, the phrase looks can be deceiving comes to mind. Out of all the fairy type Pokemon we've covered so far, Carbink not only has the highest defense stat, but special defense as well. Unfortunately for Carbink, their remaining stats, such as HP and speed, are relatively low. But as it comes in at exactly 500 for their total stats, as long as one has a pretty good offensive Pokemon in team battles, Carbink can more than do their part in making up the defensive half of your team with both of their special and regular defense stats being a very high 150. And even though it might not have an outstanding moveset while they level up, they are capable of learning certain moves to bolster their defensive abilities, such as Reflect, Light Screen, and Substitute. Next up, let's talk about Galarian Rapidash. When it comes to this regional variant, the Rapidash have ditched their usual fire typing and instead switched over to become a psychic slash fairy unicorn powerhouse. And we do mean powerhouse. Even though Galarian Rapidash Rapidash matches Carbink at the 500 stat mark. Both their attack and speed stats are very high, with their other stats being pretty well balanced as well. When it comes to attacking, Galarian Rapidash has a pretty decent 100, with their speed helping them being one of the faster fairy types at 110. But it's not only Galarian Rapidash's stronger attack strength that lands them in a spot above Carbink, but like with others, Galarian Rapidash has an ability that really helps them stand out on the battlefield, this time being Pastel Veil, which which prevents themselves and others from being poisoned. And unlike some other negative status effects, such as being confused or being asleep, which will go away after a few turns, if your Pokemon is poisoned, it will last until either an item is used or your Pokemon is KO'd, meaning Galarian Rapidash can really help out in any team. Our final regional form is up next, the Fox Pokemon Alolan Ninetales. Held in high regard by the people of the Alola region, due to them helping lost travelers on the snowy mountain, the Alola Ninetales are some pretty speedy Pokemon at a base speed of 109, as well as having a pretty good special defense at 100, with their total stats coming in at 505. We will admit that when it comes to the attack front, Alola Ninetales doesn't possess the strength like Galarian Rapidash does. They still have a fairly decent special attack and can learn some pretty powerful special attack moves, such as Blizzard 
Blizzard and Dazzling Gleam. Alolan Ninetales also has a pretty handy ability, Snow Cloak, which does increase their evasion in the snow and ice, so it is kind of a situational ability. But if one has Alolan Ninetales learn the move Hail, they would have a pretty fast, hard to hit Pokemon, who can land some pretty strong special attacks to finish their opponents off quickly. We're pretty sure our next evolutionary line heard the phrase, speak softly and carry a big stick, and took it to heart because it's time to talk about the Tinkaton line. You might think that as all three Pokemon in this line carry pieces of metal, ranging from small pieces to legit oversized comedy mallets, that their attack stat would be their strongest. But that's just not the case. Tinkatink, Tinkatuff, and Tinkaton's strongest stat during their entire evolution line is their special defense, with their speed only a few points behind. Tinkatink is one of the weaker starting fairy types when compared to some of our previous entries, with their total being only 297. And when Tinkatink evolves into Tinkatuff, the power boost to their stats is actually a bit underwhelming as well, as it isn't even 100 more points, with their max stats being 380. However, Tinkaton actually gets a really decent boost, adding nearly an extra 126 to their stats, with them coming in at 506, with their speed, special defense, and attack being amongst the strongest, being 94, 105, and 75 respectively. Plus there's the fact that this Pokemon line is the only one that can learn the incredibly strong steel move, Gigaton Hammer, as long as their trainer puts in the effort. Another Pokemon from the Galarian region, we have the silent Pokemon, Hatterin. Similar to the Tinkaton line, as there are a few Pokedex entries mentioning that if you get on Hatterin's bad side, you'll be ripped apart by the tentacle on their heads. We can't blame anyone for thinking that Hatterin's strongest stat would be their attack. And while it does actually have a fairly decent attack stat, it's their special attack that really stands out in their ranking and stats, with it being a staggering 136 with their total being 510. And as it is a dual fairy slash psychic type, it makes sense. If Hatterin has one flaw, it's their pretty low speed at a measly 29 points. But as it can not only dish out some significant damage, as well as take damage because of their relatively high defensive stats, Hatterin doesn't really have much to worry about when it comes to being slower. A trio of mischievous Pokemon are up next. The bulk up Pokemon, the Grimmsnarl line. Impidimp, Morgrim, and Grimmsnarl don't just share the fact that they were introduced in the same game with Hatterin, but like with others before them, they also share the 510 stat mark. Even though Impidimp is a pretty weak starter Pokemon in this line, coming in at 265, their attack, special attack, and speed can make them a pretty tricky opponent in Pokemon battles. With Morgrim, all of their stats get a pretty healthy boost, giving them a total of 370. When this Pokemon line finally reaches their final stage with Grimmsnarl though, their stats do get flipped around a bit. They're still pretty incredible on the attacking front, with 120 points to their name. But where Impidimp and Morgrim have relatively low defensive stats, Grimmsnarl seems to take some of their previous impressive speed stat points and lends them to bolster their defense, giving them a total of 65 points for their defense. Grimmsnarl is still a fairly well-rounded Pokemon though, and while they are better at attacking, if given the right moveset, they can prove to be both a great sword and shield in battle. Our final psychic slash fairy evolutionary line is next. The Embrace Pokemon, the Gardevoir line. Remember what we said about Azuril being the weakest starting fairy Pokemon only having a measly total of 190 for their stats. Well, say hello to the second weakest Pokemon in the lower tier, not even cracking the 200 range, and only beating Azuril by 8 points. Unlike Azuril though, who really doesn't have any stats that helps them in battle, Ralts' special attack, speed, and special defense does give them a tiny bit of help. Rather than staying in the lower 400 stat range even after they're fully evolved, after Curlia evolves into Gardevoir, their stats come in at a very impressive 518. Sure, when Ralts evolves into Curlia, they don't really get that much of a power boost, merely coming in at 278, but to go from that to adding a staggering 240 extra points to their stat total after they evolve really makes Gardevoir a tough opponent, especially when one considers their very high special attack and special defense stats. The Fairy Evolution is up next, the intertwining Pokemon, Sylveon. As Eevee and all of their evolutions are not just highly popular both amongst characters in the series but fans as well, it's not much of a surprise that pretty much all of the evolutions have good stats. Where Sylveon is concerned, it is their decent HP, special attack, and special defense that really helps them out in battle, their special defense being the strongest of the trio at 130, with special attack following up at 110. With Sylveon's combined stats,
stats coming in at 525. In addition to learning some pretty useful moves, such as Skill Swap, which can switch Sylveon's ability with another Pokemon, and the powerful attack Moonblast, Sylveon also has the hidden ability Pixelate. This useful skill not only has the power to change normal type moves into fairy typing, but also increases their power by 20%, meaning not only can Sylveon throw a curveball to catch their opponents off guard, but can also bring some pretty heavy additional damage as well. Next we have the only starter Pokemon in our ranking, the soloist Pokemon, Primarina. As this water slash fairy starter is well known in the Alola region for their beautiful singing voice, you can bet that Primarina knows a bunch of sound based moves, and as it has a very high special attack stat, being 126, their moves, such as Sparkling Aria and Hyper Voice, more than packs a punch. Primarina isn't a particularly speedy Pokemon, but as their special defense, HP, and regular attack and defense are decent too, with a total stat number of 530. Having a low speed stat is just a small flaw for this starter Pokemon. That, coupled with the fact that they have the hidden ability Liquid Voice, which helps other water Pokemon get an attack stat bonus whenever Primarina uses sound based moves, makes this mermaid look alike Pokemon a great asset to any team. Next up we have the Jubilee Pokemon, the Togekiss line. Togepi, the first Pokemon in this evolutionary family, was the first ever baby type Pokemon seen in the series, appearing in the anime before the others were introduced. And as you might have guessed, as Togepi's lower body is still encased in their egg shell, they are far from fast. However, despite not being quick or the best attackers, Togepi does have some impressive defense stats when compared to the other baby Pokemon, with them coming in at 245. After Togepi Togepi sheds their shells and develops their wings after evolving into Togetic. They still aren't the fastest Pokemon on this list, but their special defense, special attack, as well as their HP and normal defense increase quite a bit, with Togetic's stats coming in at 405. With Togekiss, they not only wish to spread happiness everywhere they go, but all of their stats, with the exception of their base attack, increases quite a bit, this time with their special attack becoming their strongest trait at 120, with their special defense and defense close behind being 115 and 95 respectively, coming in at a total of 545. Sure, the Togekiss line does lack a unique ability that is specifically for their own evolutionary line, but as Togekiss can learn some pretty useful moves regardless, they definitely earn their ranking here. Next up we have the Garden Pokemon, the Florges line. Starting out this evolutionary line, we have Flabebe. And as far as first stage Pokemon go, it actually has some pretty decent stats, with their special defense being particularly strong and Flabebe's grand total being 303. Once it evolves into Floet, as with some previous evolutionary lines, they only get a small power boost, bringing their total to 371, but their special defense still being their strongest asset at 98 points. If their trainers are lucky enough to come across a shiny stone and evolve Floet into Florges, this is where their their true strength comes out, with a significant boost of 180 stat points, landing Florges squarely at 552 for their total stats. Like with their previous two evolutions, the strongest stat that it has is their special defense, this time being 154, which is significantly higher than any other stat they have. But their special attack is also fairly decent at 112. The Florges line also has the useful ability Flower Veil. It is a bit situational, like with Alola Ninetail Snow Cloak, but with Flower Veil, if any of the Pokemon in the Florges line are on the battlefield with allied grass types, this ability prevents any opposing Pokemon from lowering any stats of grass type Pokemon. We're finally arriving at the legendaries of the Pokemon universe, and we might be cheating a bit, but we're gonna do a group ranking for all of the Guardians of Alola. Due to all of the Tapu Pokemon having pretty similar stats, each one having a grand total of 570, with only one stat being more prominent from the other Pokemon in the family. Probably the weakest of the Guardians is Tapu Bulu. Out of all the Alolan Guardians, Tapu Bulu has the highest base attack, with it being 130, in addition to being able to land heavy blows. Its base defense at 115 makes them able to hold up against some head-on attacks pretty well. However, out of all the Guardians, Tapu Bulu has the lowest speed and special defense, which can make them kind of easy targets at times. Slightly above, we have the water slash fairy type, Tapu Fini. This legendary has a very high special defense, no doubt, with an impressive 130. And when it comes to Tapu Fini's regular defense at 115, they can take pretty much any attack and still be standing, as well as dishing it back with their 95 special attack. 
but when it comes to their lackluster base attack and speed stats, we consider them only slightly stronger than Tapu Bulu. For our second strongest guardian of Alola, the spot has to go to the psychic fairy, Tapu Lele. Like we said, all the guardians have a particular stat that really stands above the others. This time being this special attack at 130 for Tapu Lele. And with the impressive special attack and speed being 115 and 95, this guardian can be an incredible force to be reckoned with. But for the strongest guardian of all, we have to give it to the electric fairy type, Tapu Koko. Unlike the other guardians whose strongest stats are either attacking or defense, Tapu Koko's highest stat is their speed at 130. But let us explain why we consider this particular guardian the strongest of the quartet. In addition to being incredibly speedy, Tapu Koko can deal really heavy damage very quickly, as the regular attack is their second highest trait at 115, and their special attack following closely behind at 95. We will admit that when it comes to defense, Tapu Koko is pretty lacking, but given their impressive speed coupled with their decent attack power, it can make short work of their opponents since there is a good chance that they'll be the first to attack. We're going back in time to the Hisui region for our next legendary, the love-hate Pokemon, Enamorous. Despite looking like this particular Pokemon would find its home in a Final Fantasy game as a boss character, Enamorous was held in pretty high regard by the residents of the Hisui region. And as the love-hate Pokemon is part of the family that includes both Tornadus and Thunderous, it goes without saying that Enamorous is a pretty powerful legendary, with their special attack being 135, closely followed by their regular attack at 115, and their speed coming in at 106. It can cause some pretty heavy damage very quickly, with all of their stats coming to 580. If we had to pick one shank in Enamorous's armor, it would have been their relatively low HP stat of 64. But as there are loads of healing items one can give to their Pokemon to help them out in battle, Enamorous doesn't have too much to worry about. We're going back into the caves one final time for the jewel Pokemon, Deancey. Out of all the legendaries, both of Deancey's defense and special defense are through the roof, outshining their other stats, both being a whopping 150. When it comes to its attacking power, it isn't horrible, as with their defense, both the base attack and special attack tie at 100 points. But like with most Pokemon, Deancey does have few stats that could use some boosting, as both of Deancey's HP and speed are relatively low, both at 50 points. But for a combined total of 600 stats, plus the fact that once it mega evolves, not only does her already impressive stats get an even bigger power boost, but her HP and speed are no longer a negative factor. So this legendary is definitely one of the strongest Pokemon out there. Our final Pokemon, coming from the sunny Alola region, also takes the bronze medal for most powerful fairy type. The artificial Pokemon, Majerna. Unlike Deancey, when it comes to Majerna's stats, none of them are really through the roof, but all of them still combine to tie with Deancey at a 600 stat mark. So why are we placing Majerna in a spot above Deancey? Well, even though there is no stat in particular that is leaps and bounds above the others, it still has a well-rounded offensive and defensive approach. With their special attack coming in at 130, along both of Majerna's special and base defense coming in at 115, which is more than a handful on the battlefield. Plus, while Majerna's HP is lower than their other stats, it is still above Deancey's, with it being 80 points. Plus, while it is kind of a morbid power, it is the only Pokemon that has the ability Soul Heart. Similar to some other Pokemon who get a boost if certain conditions are met, Majerna's special attack gets an increase whenever an ally Pokemon faints on the battlefield. Kind of tragic and sad, sure, but as this helps deal really heavy damage, especially with moves like Fleur Cannon, it is a big plus. But real quick before we get to our next entries, if you're enjoying this video and you want to do us a huge favor, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. We ask because we'd really appreciate the help in getting to our next milestone, and we have a ton more content in the works that we can't wait to share with you. We will admit that the argument can be made for either of our final two fairy-type legendaries getting the top spot, but we decided to give the Silver Medal of Power to Zacian. The reason we decided to give them the number two spot is because Zacian needs to use an item in order to unlock their full potential. Even without the Rusted Sword, though, its total stats come to a very impressive 660, and we wouldn't be surprised if you thought that Zacian's attack would be this legendary's strongest stat, but it's actually only second behind their speed, coming in at 138, and their attack being 120, and their special defense only a few points behind at 115. But thanks to their ability Intrepid Sword, Zacian's attack gets a boost whenever they enter a Pokemon battle, but we just don't know by how much. However, if Zacian is holding the Rusted Sword and transforms into the Crown Sword form, their attack goes through the roof 
with it becoming 150 and their speed getting bumped up to 148, and their combined total now a staggering 700. And as Zacian learns some pretty devastating moves while they level up, such as close combat and giga impact, it's not an exaggeration to say that any Pokemon that goes up against this legendary likely won't stand a chance. And finally, we arrive at our strongest fairy type. The gold medal goes to the life Pokemon, Xerneas. Really, is it any surprise that the strongest fairy type Pokemon was introduced in the same game as the fairy typing? While most of our previous legendaries have at least one stat that could use some boosting, that is just not the case for Xerneas. With an impressive base and special attack at 131 each, a very high HP at 126, and with both of their defense stats and speed being in the high 90s, Xerneas's combined total is a staggering 680, and not only does Xerneas have an ability that powers up every fairy type move, Fairy Aura, they have a signature move that gives all of their stats a huge shot in the arm whenever it's used, Geomancy. Regardless if Xerneas battles by themselves or as part of a team, this legendary fairy type is going to be a powerhouse both alone and with others, and we feel that Xerneas undoubtedly deserves the gold medal for strongest fairy type Pokemon out there. But tell us down below in the comment section what your favorite fairy type Pokemon is, and which one do you think is the strongest? Make sure to hit that notification bell and binge our other Pokemon videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.